Okay, I wound up um, going into another video because the other one was getting pretty long. So we were talking about in the last video about uh, using a checkbook. So when you open up a checkbook, you are going to um, get checks. You're going to get some checks and you're going to get a check register, which are two pretty important things that go along with the checkbook. And then we talked about using debit cards and smart cards. And then now this section is talking about checking your financial statements. Uh, your financial institution will also keep records on your account and send them to you. These records called statements are computerized printouts showing which checks have been paid, which deposits have been made, and what fees or services charge, service charges have been deducted. Go over each statement to make sure that your own records are correct. Subtract any fees in your checkbook you haven't already subtracted. Be certain your checkbook balance agrees with the figures on your statement. Some accounts return your canceled, che your canceled or paid checks along with your statement, or usually like a copy of them. If, you, if yours are returned, keep these as proof of bills you've paid and money you've spent. And you know, people do make mistakes, so you have, you know, you should keep a record and you should check things because nobody's perfect. If you write checks for more money than you have in your account, the account will be overdrawn. Institutions charge a fee for overdrawn checks because there's a lot of work that goes into getting the money uh, where it should be if you've written a check for something that you and I have money for. You didn't have money for in your checking account. They may also send a check back to the business that presented it for payment, causing you embarrassment and additional charges. For these reasons, keep careful track of your account. Okay, so we're going to start talking about savings accounts now. And a savings account does not have checks that go with it. You go to the bank, you get a slip, and you withdraw money from your savings account. Which is, which, what, it actually might be what you have um, is a savings account of your own, or you've had one for a while, or you want to start one. Okay, so it says you can protect money, you can protect extra money, and make it earn money for uh, you by opening up a savings account. Many people start savings accounts to save for a major goal, such as college or um, a car. People also save for future vacations and unplanned emergencies. Savings accounts increase the amount you deposit by paying you interest. Interest is the money a financial institution pays at regular intervals for the use of your money. The interest is a certain percentage of the amount of your savings. Instead, or interest rates, sorry, on the next page here, right somewhere in here. Okay, so the interest is a certain percentage of the amount in your savings, in your savings. Interest rates can vary. Always compare interest rates before opening an account. And I'm on this next paragraph right in here. Some savings accounts can be opened with a deposit of $100 or less. You may deposit cash or checks and as you need to fill and you need to fill out a deposit slip. When you're ready to use money from your savings, you can withdraw part of it but you need to maintain a certain amount in the, in the account to keep it open. To take out money, complete a withdraw slip with your name, account number, signature, and the amount. You'll receive a record of your savings account showing deposits, withdrawals, and your current balance. This record is usually printed is a printed statement sent at regular intervals. So maybe like every three months your financial institution will send that. Okay, it says tips on the side here, check out fees. Financial institutions often charge fees for services. Compare fees of different institutions before opening an account. Check, the, check to see how much, if any, is charged. If 
your balance falls below a specific minimum amount, you have overdrawn checks, you write more than a certain number of checks each month, you use a teller rather than a, an ATM, you use another bank's ATM, and you use online banking, banking from your home computer. And I think the one about like using a different bank's ATM, that's the one that it's going to charge you like $3 every time you use it. And $3 does add up. Um, and so you want to make sure that you're getting um, a bank account for yourself for a bank that's probably local and that the ATM machine works because if not you have to go to a different bank and they're gonna charge you okay next section is called credit and this is where it could possibly sometimes get dangerous for some people so be careful on uh, with using credit so at this stage of your life you probably pay cash for items and services you buy in the future, when you'll have more income, you may be eligible to use credit as a tool to help you manage your money. So credit is a tool that's going to help you manage your money. Credit is an arrangement that lets you buy things now and pay for them later. So you're buying something now and you pay for it later. These are two major types of credit. Loans and then sales credit or charge accounts. So loans are this right here. With loans, you can borrow money from financial institutions or loan companies. You use the money you borrow to pay for purchases and then pay back your loan in specific amounts. So I might go to the bank and get a loan for a house because I can't pay that much money at one time. Some people can, but most people, they will get a loan and they will borrow the money. They pay back a financial institution and it's the same amount every month and it divides up what they owe. Okay, the next one is sales credit or charge accounts. With this type of credit, you receive your purchase now and pay a store or credit card company later for what you owe. What does credit cost? Using credit costs money. In addition to money you owe, you also pay the lender a certain percentage of interest. If you use credit cards and pay interest unless, wait, I'll read that over. If you use credit cards, you pay interest unless you pay the total of your bill on the time each month, on time each month. So if I have $500 on my credit card and the bill comes in tomorrow, I should pay all $500 of that or how much? Yeah, I think I said 500 because if not, they're going to charge me an interest rate and I don't want to pay more than what I already paid to begin with. The interest will be a percentage of the unpaid balance on your credit card account. Late fees are charged additionally if payments aren't made on time. So be very careful with that. Because credit is more expensive than paying cash, use it only when necessary, like for your needs, not your wants. Interest rates vary, so shop around for credit. You can save money by taking time to find the low interest rates. To get credit, you, may, you must apply for it and prove you're able to pay what you owe. Banks and companies that give you credit protect themselves against loss. They check your credit application and consider the following. So this is what a financial institution is going to do. They're going to check this. Your credit rating. Companies called Credit bureaus keep track of your record of paying debts. A poor credit rating can stop you from getting more credit in the future. A good credit rating is important throughout your life. And then another thing is your income and money resources in general. Will you have enough money to make payments on your credit card or loans? Credit is easy to use and misuse. 
debts can quickly mount up and people can get into serious credit trouble. For this reason, it's wise to use credit only when necessary. Only when necessary. Okay. You can see this little chart here. You can study that when you get a second. You can pause the video at the end and look at that chart there. It's kind of interesting about payments, like monthly, month, monthly payments. Okay, the tips on the side here say to protect yourself from credit card fraud. Don't keep your pin in your wallet or purse. Memorize it instead. Use a pin different from your birthday address or social security number. Report loss of stolen cards immediately to credit card companies. Write down your account number and company telephone number as soon as you get a card. Uh, file it File the information where it can be quickly found. Save your receipts and compare them with your billing statement. I used my debit card one time and it the company or the restaurant I was at, um, they actually made a mistake and they charged me twice. So I took the receipt back because I kept the receipt and I was like, hey, that charged me twice and I didn't even pay attention when I was there. But they I did get my money back. Okay. So that is about managing your money. Hopefully you have learned more about being a good money manager.